Now stay tuned for X-1 on NBC. Countdown for blast off. X-5, 4, 3, 2, X-1, fire. From the far horizons of the unknown come transcribed tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future, adventures in which you'll live in a million could-be years on a thousand maybe worlds. The National Broadcasting Company, in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, presents... X minus one... Tonight, Project Mastodon by Clifford D. Simak. Mr. Secretary, may I present Mr. Hudson of... Um, Mastodonia. Uh, Mastodonia. Mr. Hudson, this is the Secretary of State. Honored, sir. Now, as Chief of Protocol for the Department, I've... Informed All you... right, Mr. Kingston, I haven't much time. I'm due at a meeting of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee at 2... If you pass Mr. Hudson in, I'll assume everything is quite proper. Now then, Mr. Hudson, I understand you've been here several times seeking recognition for your uh, country. Well, that's right. I had a hard time making your staff believe I was in earnest. And are you, Mr. Hudson? Oh, very much so. You are an American, Mr. Hudson. I assume you are acting as a representative for Macedonia rather than as a principal in the matter. Oh, no, no, no. I claim dual citizenship, sir. I am a Macedonian. You, you pardon me, but I've never heard of your uh, country. Well, it's a new nation, but quite legitimate. We have a constitution, a democratic form of government, duly elected officials, and a code of laws. We are a free, peace-loving people, and we are possessed of a vast amount of natural resources. And... Please tell me, Mr. Hudson, just where are you located? I gathered it was somewhere in uh, Asia. Oh, no, no. Technically, you are our nearest neighbor. That's ridiculous. Now, look here, Hudson, you can't... If you'll give me just a moment, Mr. Secretary, I, I have considerable evidence... Here. I'll have to ask you to leave. I'm sorry, sir, Go I... ahead, Mr. Hudson. You've submitted a document signed by a certain Wesley Adams. Well, he's our first president. Uh, you see, we'd like to establish diplomatic relations. After all, we are a sister republic. We'd like to negotiate a trade agreement, and, uh, uh, of course, we'd be grateful for assistance under the foreign aid program. Naturally. Who wouldn't? Mr. Secretary. All right, Kingston. We're prepared to offer something in return for uh, one thing. Sanctuary. Sanctuary? I understand that in the present state of international tensions, a foolproof sanctuary is not something to be sneezed at. Hmm. All right, Kingston, I think we've had enough. Show Mr. Hudson out. All right, let's have the story again. Look, mister, I don't want any trouble. Just tell the story again. You want to cooperate with the FBI, don't oh, you? Oh, sure, sure I do. Sure, but I just don't want any trouble. All right, start over. You found the briefcase in the booth. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I brought my beer over from the bar, you know? And this fellow just went out a minute before, so I figured he must have left it. I run after him. Uh, you didn't see him, though? No. So I... Well, I, I just kind of looked in the briefcase. You know, I, I mean to identify it. That's all. I don't steal. All right, then you came to us. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, after all, when I saw that stuff, well, I just figured I was way over my head, you know? All right. Don't say anything about this, do you understand? We'd rather you uh, just forgot the whole thing. Oh, sure, sure. Listen, some things I don't want to remember. You know? Hello? Is this Dr. Harrison of the Paleontology Department? This is Mr. Jenkins at the Federal Bureau of Investigation. 
We have some movie film we'd like you to look over. Huh? Oh, uh, we acquired it. Big shaggy elephants and tigers with teeth down to their neck. No. No, it's not fakes. Our labs are sure of that. Whatever is on those films is real. Hmm? No, we don't know. That's why we called you. We haven't the slightest idea where those pictures were shot. We can't even guess. matter, Coop? One of those flying hypodermics. This is a fine, healthy spot. Mosquitoes as big as hummingbirds. Oh, careful, son. You're knocking the climate of the capital city of Macedonia. Yeah, some capital city. One palm tree and a Boy Scout pup tent. Wes, this is the wildest thing we ever did. What if Chuck can't get back? Chuck Hudson is a man of many parts. Have faith. Supposing they're putting him in jail or, or something might happen to the time unit or the helicopter. We should have gone along. Do you think they'll do it, Coop? Who? Oh, why? The United States. Do you think they'll recognize us? Not if they know that Macedonia is the United States 50,000 years ago. Oh. Well, we have to get legal recognition first, otherwise it wouldn't be safe. Oh, there goes that mastodon again. Good old Buster. Where is he? Right there. Over by the groves, huh? Nah, he's lonely. What? He probably is. He must have been run out of the herd by some younger bull. That's why he hangs around like some homeless dog. Hey, one thing worries me, Wes. I know you dreamed up the time unit, and we all chipped in for the helicopter, but... Can you just claim territory on your own like we did? Why not? We found it. It's ours. Hey, Buster's coming this way. Give me the right. No, wait, wait, wait. Maybe he's only bluffing. If that mastodon comes through here, he'll stop everything flat. I'll give him three steps more. Oh, it'd be such a shame to plaster him. He's such a nice old monster. One more step and he gets it. Hey, that's Chuck. He's back. I wish he could fly that helicopter better. He might wreck it. Well... Anyway, he scared Buster off. Poke those fires up, Wes. No, oh, they're high enough, Coop. Well, you don't want a saber tooth waltzing through here, do you? Well, we better get a stockade up. You know, some night a herd of mastodon will come busting in here, and if they ever hit the helicopter, we'll be dead ducks. We'd never get back. We'd be stuck back here in the Pleistocene age. I won't feel safe till we get another helicopter. Those mastodons carry a lot of ivory. And the mammoths up north. Oh, sure, sure. And get socked in the jug for smuggling ivory. The only way to cash in on the time unit is to get diplomatic recognition for Macedonia. We've got a good case. You said so yourself. Oh, a saber tooth? Down by the grove. Hmm. I don't like that. Sounds closer. Hey, poke up that fire, will you, Coop? Oh, well, that's Buster. There he is. He's tangling with a saber tooth. I'll lay three to five on Buster. Cat's drawing blood. I'll take five dollars of it. Come on, Buster. Roll on him, will you? Cat's on his head now. Hey! Hey, he's coming this Look way. Look out! Wes, turn him. Shoot! Dad? Yeah. The tiger's gone. He won't get far. Neither will we. Oh, no. No. Yeah, good old Buster. Trust him to drop dead right across the helicopter. Well, we can fix it, can't we? We probably won't even be able to roll Buster off of it. And the rotor blades are twisted and the frame is a mess. A total mess, gentlemen. We are in trouble. Macedonia faces a crisis. Herb, Herb, you're...
you're the key man in the administration. You swing a big stick on the hill. You can't give up on Project Mastodon now. Les, it's been ten years. If they were coming back, they'd be here by now. Look, I've been working on this ever since we got those films. I've traced their lives from the time they were born till the time they disappeared. Adams was the brains. The other two were quite capable of helping him carry it out. Hudson knew all the angles. Les, I've sneaked your appropriation through four times. Now, there's a limit. But I've got the proof. We've had every paleontologist in the country go over those films. They couldn't be faked. Who would know to, to put lynx tassels on the ears of saber-toothed tigers? Who would know that young mastodons were black? And the location... We tracked down Adam's farm just from landmarks in the prehistoric landscape in those films. We've got to contact them. Look, Les, even assuming it's all true, a planet has only a grand total of resources. If we get Adam's uh, device... Time machine. If we exploit resources of prehistoric America, won't we be robbing ourselves of our own heritage? Look, Herb, I've been over all that with the AEC. There's a lot of lead in southwestern Wisconsin. If we go back far enough, we can catch it when it's uranium. The whole research project hasn't turned up a lead on Adam's machine, if it exists. We've got to keep watching that farm. They might return. We've got to keep looking for them, no matter how long it takes. <laughs> Listen, Wes, we can't stay around here much longer. Old Buster's getting a little too strong. Yeah, well, I'll have the time unit clear the helicopter in a few minutes. And then we'll just have to move camp upwind. Hmm? Look at him. It's only two days since he dropped dead. Bless his heart. Freddy, those vultures are half into him. I'll have him picked clean inside of a week. Oh, uh, give me the hex wrench, will you? Wes, is, is, it, is it all right? The time unit? Well, we won't know until we try it, Coop. And then, of course, it's too late. Well, either it does or it doesn't. Problem is... How are we going to use it without the copter? Couldn't we take a chance on using it on the ground? No, we have to get up in the air. You want to take a chance of arriving in the 20th century about six feet underground. Wait a minute, Wes. It's got to be higher here than in the 20th century. Look, these hills have stood here since the Jurassic era. They've got to be weathered down. Yeah, no. Well, the only safe way is to build a platform about uh, 12 feet high. That should be enough to clear us. But suppose we come out in the other end two feet higher. Well, we fall. Which would you rather do, take a chance on a broken leg or stay yeah, here? Okay, okay. Now, what do we build the platform out of? Here you are, Wes. All right, I got it. <clears throat> Chuck, comes the next stone. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hey, look out. You want a whole pile to come down. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, Wes, hand it up. Yep. Uh, give me... Uh, that's about 12 feet, isn't it? Well, it ought to be. It took us 10 days to pile it up. Look out, I'm coming down. All right, don't start an avalanche. Well, pretty soon we'll be able to start all over again. Mm-hmm. If the unit works. Now, that isn't all. We don't have any proof we've been back here. We'll be stone broke. Another helicopter would cost $30,000. Can't walk into a bank and borrow 30 grand to take a short trip to the Stone Age. Wes, where do you figure we are? I, I mean, on a farm. Well, I think we're clear of the barn and the silo. I hope so. The way I figured, we're straddle that barbed wire fence at the uh, south end of the orchard. Well, we might as well give it a try. All right, I'll get the unit. You two climb up on top of the pyramid. <laughs> You ready? Think it'll work, Wes? I don't know, Coop. Got pretty well banged up when Buster hit the copter. I haven't got the equipment to check the waveforms. All right, stand around close, bend your knees a little. Mm. Might be quite a drop. Go ahead. Push the button. Okay. One, two, three. Nothing. Doesn't work. Well... That's that. We're stuck. I'm 
I'm sorry, Les. There's nothing you can do, Herb. You've been out of government for five years. If there's anything I can do, the board of directors instructed me to offer you... No, thank you. Well, what are you going to do? I, I mean, now that you're retired. I bought a farm. Oh? In Wisconsin. Well, you haven't given up, have you? I'm the only one. They closed Project Mastodon down three years ago, and they've been hinting ever since that I'd be happier retired. Old Bowers, he's the crackpot from Project Mastodon. I'm sorry, Les, but it has been 20 years. Yes, yes, it has. But think of it. From a military point of view, hidden bases in enemy territory itself, centuries removed in time, yet only seconds away. If we had bases like that and shelters... Relax, Les, it's all over. Sure, sure, it's all over. Ah, missed. Uh, you should be more careful. We've only been stuck a month now. Someday we'll run out of ammo and then it's bows and arrows. It's cold. There'll be snow soon. Coop, I'm worried about Wes. He takes it pretty hard. As long as he's tinkering on that time unit, he's happy. Oh, he isn't going to repair the unit. He hasn't got a chance. Back in the workshop, the tools, maybe. Well, anyway, the hunting's great. Well, maybe we better start saving bullets for big game. We won't be lords of creation around here long without our guns. Yeah, and if one of us gets sick or breaks a leg... Well, nobody lives forever. Wes is the lucky one. He's got that time unit to tinker with. Come on. We better get back to camp. Hey. Hey, what? Come on. Wes! Wes! There's no sign of him. Wait, there's a note on the door. Wes! Never mind, listen. Dear guys, I don't want to get your hopes up again and have you disappointed, but I think I may have found the trouble. I'm going to try it out. If it works, I'll be back to get you. Wes. What, a fool? That unit can't work. He must be off his rocker. Wait a minute. Coop, look, that pyramid... It took us ten days to pile those stones up. It's gone. A pyramid of rocks. It's gone. Oh, oh what the... Of all the confounded... Oh, what's, what's going on out there? Rocks? Who dumped those rocks? My car, who's out there? It's all right. Don't you move, mister. I got a forty-five pointed at you. Well, I can explain. Well, you better. There was a brand new car where you dumped that load of rocks. Who the devil are you? Uh, my name is Wesley Adams. Adams? Adams? Man, where have you been all these years? Well, I don't suppose you'll believe me, but the fact is... I've been waiting for you for 25 years. The others all gave up. I'm sorry about your car. Oh, never mind. I'll be right down. Now, now don't... Touch a thing. Don't go anywhere. But it can't be 25 years. It's only been a few months in Macedonian time. 25 years. Man, it's been a long wait. The unit must have been badly calibrated. You see, it isn't accurate for more than 50,000 years at a jump if the setting has moved. Well, we better call her Washington. I imagine you'll want the same terms as before. Hmm? Terms? Yeah, recognition, economic aid from Macedonia, defense pact. Now, listen, Adams, you've got those saps over a barrel. You can get anything you want now. A unit. I'll have to calibrate to the day to go back for them. Oh, don't worry about it. You can have every scientist in the country working on it now. Oh, you've got them right where you want them. Hello? A long distance. This is uh, Major General Leslie Bowers, retired. I want to put a call to the uh, President of the United States, White House, Washington. You can tell them I'm placing the call for the President of the Republic of Macedonia. Come in. 
Come on, Og, son of fire. Put another log on. It's cold. It's good cold storage for the furs. Boy, when Wes gets back, we'll be millionaires. Furs, ginseng root, ivory. If he gets back. It's been five years. He'll come back. I feel it in my bones. Well, he better find it before we get too old to enjoy anything. Unfortunately, there's no social security in Master Don't. Don't you worry. Wes is working on it right now. I can feel it. Hello, Charlie. Some just came through on a ticker. I want you to get a background story on it. And we just recognized Mastodonia. What? How should I know where it is? Look it up in the encyclopedia. Huh? Nah, the item says formal recognition was delayed five years until communication could be established. Certain technical difficulties. What? I don't know. Wherever it is, I don't see what difficulties could hold up five years. It stands to reason wherever the place is, you could walk there in five years. Nah, nah, it's not important. You know these postage stamp countries. Monaco, Luxembourg, they're all alike. What's so different about Mastodonia? You have just heard X-1, presented by the National Broadcasting Company in cooperation with Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, which this month features the Theodore Sturgeon novelette, The Skills of Xanadu. When a malignant world endangers another, surgery is the usual answer. But perhaps there's another solution, to kill it with kindness. Galaxy Magazine on your newsstand today. Tonight, by transcription, X-1 has brought you Project Mastodon, a story from the pages of Galaxy written by Clifford D. Simak and adapted for radio by Ernest Canoy. Featured in the cast were Floyd Mack, Dick Hamilton, Charles Penman, Raymond Edward Johnson, Frank Maxwell, Robert Hastings, John Larkin, and Joseph Julian. Your announcer is Jerry Damon. X-1 was directed by Daniel Sutter and is an NBC Radio Network production. Listen next week for the Mary Lanester story, If You Was a Motlin, a tale in which the childlike natives of a strange planet pull a real switch on a red-headed female witch and everyone doubles in brass. That's next week 